Thank you. Mr. Jackson, you need to be sworn. You have, yes, Your Honour. You have a Bible there? I certainly do. Would you take the Bible in your hand, please, and repeat after me? I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give in this Royal Commission. That the evidence I shall give in this Royal Commission. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Yes, thank you. Take a seat again, please. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Stewart. As Your Honour pleases. Uh, Mr. Jackson, will you state your full names and your work address, please? Yes, my name is Geoffrey William Jackson, and I work at 25 Columbia Heights, uh, but the mailing address is 124 Columbia Heights, Brooklyn, New York. If it's not the case that someone uh, who has not actively disassociated but merely sought to fade or become inactive is not governed by the rules, then where is the line drawn between those who are subject to the rules and those who aren't? Uh, that's a good question, and that's where judgment uh, comes in. Uh, by judgment, I mean uh, using a person's nous uh, as to what is someone still perceived as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in the community. Well, isn't that the point, that if someone is perceived as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in the community, that's because... Uh, they have not disassociated or been disfellowshipped? Uh, well, it, it has to do with what the person is telling other persons. Well, there's no middle road, is there? I mean, there's, there's, you're either a member and subject to the organization, or you're not. Isn't that the case? Uh, yes, but I thought you were asking me about disassociation. Well, I am indeed. So if someone hasn't disassociated but has sought merely to, to become inactive or to fade, they then still subject to the organization's discipline and rules. Uh, if they acknowledge being one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And if they do the contrary, which is to say they're not one of Jehovah's Witnesses, the effect of that is disassociation. Uh, that's if they decide to go down that course. And if they don't actively disassociate, then they will be disfellowshipped as apostates. Uh, no, uh, an, apost no uh, an apostate is someone who actively uh, goes against uh, what the Bible teaches. Well, if the elders come on the door to a former member and they, and, or sorry, to a, to a member who's been inactive and sought to fade away and says, well, are you... Uh, still a Jehovah's Witness or not, and the person says, well, I, no, I don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness, the consequence of that will be either disfellowshipping or disassociation, won't it? No, I don't agree with that, and uh, not from what I've seen. Uh, like, can I just say this hypothetical situation, which is uh, a, probably a, a one that could happen, two elders call at the door of someone, they're not going to come out and say, hello, I've been celebrating Christmas. Uh, it presupposes that Jehovah's Witnesses have some sort of spy network to monitor these people, which we don't. Certainly loyal Christians would not associate with anyone called a brother who is practicing serious sin. And this can be true, friends, even if the congregation action has not been taken. For example, with the case of a long-time inactive one. Notice the following example. One young witness remembers the stand that he and his brothers took when their mother, long and active as a Christian, entered an adulterous marriage. We reported the matter to the elders, she recalls, and since she did not live at home, we, the young brothers, decided to limit their association with her until the elders could handle the matter. It was the hardest thing we ever had to do, he said. Their mother protested, does your everlasting life mean more to you than I do? She was talking at the hard strings. What did they do? They replied, our relationship with Jehovah means more than anything. Yes, 
Dear brothers and sisters, this can be a real test, a real trial when a family member is involved. We cannot let our hearts get into the matter. We must not allow strong family ties to lead us to compromise our loyalty, not to our family, but to our Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, and His organization. Lying involves saying something incorrect to a person who is entitled to know the truth about a matter. But there is also something that is called a half-truth. Lies and half-truths undermine trust. So we need to speak openly and honestly with each other, not withholding bits of information that could change the perception in the listener or mislead him.